There's an image in the commentary for the practice. It's a big termite nest with six holes, and there's a lizard inside, and you want to catch the lizard. So you stop up five of the holes, and you just keep watch at the one hole. It's still open. The six holes, of course, stand for the six sense spheres. The one you leave open is the mind. Of course, one of the five is the nose. You leave that a little bit open so you can breathe. But your attention has to be on what your mind is doing right now. And when you're sitting and meditating, you can give 100% of your attention here. Sounds outside, you don't have to notice them. Sights, you can't see them because your eyes are closed. Smells, taste. A little bit of tactile sensation, but again, you don't have to pay much attention to it. There's nothing in terms of a lot of variety happening. You're just sitting on, the, on a cushion, sitting on the floor. Not much is going on there. This allows the mind to come to the fore. Because as we go through the day, so much of our attention is focused on things coming through the other senses, especially the sense of sight sound. And we have to share our time with the affairs of the world. But now you can give all your time to the mind. And the trick in learning how to meditate properly is learning how to balance these two different contexts. In other words, when you are engaged in the world, you don't open all the, the holes of the termite nest all, all the way. This is where it's good to switch the image to the John Lee's image of a house. It has windows and doors that you could open and close. You exercise restraint in your actions. You exercise restraint in what you take in, what you focus on. I was talking this evening to someone who was saying that he walks down the street and he noticed he was looking for all the pretty girls, passing judgment on the ones who were walking past. Did they qualify or not? Of course, that wasn't helping his meditation. He'd come back and his mind would be stirred up. So he made up his mind, looked for the signs of aging. They're there. He found that when he came back home, his mind settled down a lot more quickly because it had the Dharma in mind all the time. The mind was talking to itself about the Dharma. And that's a skill you've got to develop, because that's what restraint depends on. How you talk to yourself about the sights you're going to look for, the sounds you're going to listen for, and the ones that you do encounter, how you take them in. In other words, what you're going out for and what you bring back in with you. Talk to yourself skillfully. Remind yourself that the word for meditation in Pali and Bhavana literally means development. And development is something you can do all the time. Remember also that John Fung's recommendation is don't divide the day up into different times. All the time is time to meditate. It's when you're working around the monastery, when you're dealing with whatever. It's time to look at your mind. And as for those other doors and windows, or the, the holes in the termite's nest, be very careful about what comes in, what goes out. I noticed when John Fuang was working with his students, he would get them to the point where in their meditation, their form of meditation, they were just with this sense of knowing. He'd have you first go through the breath, get the breath all straightened out, and then balance the elements. Make sure the body was not too warm, not too cold, wasn't too heavy, wasn't too light. From there he'd recommend that you go to space, and then from space to consciousness, awareness, knowing. 
and then it would help you try to stay with that sense of knowing as you went through the day. And you would notice what things would stir you out. And if you found that just being with the knowing was not solid enough, you go back to the breath. Have a sense of the breath energy in the body. Be aware of that as your foundation, as your anchor. But it's basically knowing right here in the present moment, with the breath as anchor, or sometimes just a sense of knowing on its own. And John Fung had one student. She and her husband had an electronics store. And they lived right above the store, and so the kids were coming in and out all the time. They had six kids in the family, and here she was in the midst of all the, that activity. And she was able to stay with just that sense of knowing, knowing, knowing as she went through the day. And that was how she was able to connect one meditation session to the next, by meditating in between. So this is something you want to aim for. The ability to have some restraint over what you take in and what comes out. And this, as I say, will depend on how you talk to yourself. You want to, for the most part, get that conversation down to something really simple, just the perception, knowing, or space, or breath. And as soon as you leave that one perception, you want to know why. And if you have good reasons, okay. You, there are things to think about, okay. Things you have to deal with, okay. But if the mind is just spinning stories on its own, you say, look, you've got better work to do, more important work. Developing this skill of having a perception that you hold all the day. Now notice this is called staying with the knowing, or staying with a sense of the knower. Sometimes you hear it said that you're supposed to be the knower. I cannot imagine how you would say that in Thai in a way that would not sound strange to every Thai person I know. So it's not true that all the Johns taught that, which you sometimes hear. They would say, stay with the knower, which basically means stay with this sense of knowing. And it's a technique, it's a tool. It's one of the skills you want to develop. It's not where we're going. It's part of the path. And the path here is to learn how to connect your meditation sessions, the formal meditation sessions, so you don't have to start over from square one every time you sit down and close your eyes. You don't have a lot of garbage to clean out that you picked up as you went through the day. And we tend to complain about things other people did, things other people said. That's not the worst garbage. The worst garbage is the things you, you thought, things you did, that weren't really skillful, because they direct the mind in another direction. The Buddha's images of the mind being bent. The things you think about, the things you go for in the course of the day. Well, your mind is going to be bent in that direction when you sit down. And here you are. You have a short meditation session, an hour, two hours. And you're going to unbend it. And then you go bending it again when you go back out. There's no way the mind is going to get straightened out. You want to bend it in the proper direction and then. Make sure that the direction that you've got to bend as you meditate is the direction that you maintain as you go through the day. That way the skills of the mind get solidified. And you get more and more in line with what a John Fung's idea was, which was make the day timeless. In other words, you don't have any particular times. There's only one time, time to meditate, time to train the mind. When you can have this kind of continuous practice, it does develop momentum, because it's all going in the same direction all the time. It 
Think of a car. If you drive for a bit and then you back up, and then you drive for a bit and then you back up, it's hard to build up momentum. But if you're headed straight down the track without deviating, even as you're dealing with other things, you have in mind that you're doing this from the point of view of the Dharma, and you're doing it from your inner foundation. The foundation you've learned to develop as you meditate, and then you maintain it as you go out into the day. And John Lee's images of getting some nice good food in a, in a covered dish. You carry the dish with you. You don't take the cover off. Because you take the cover off, then all kinds of insects and animals are going to come and eat up what you've got in the dish. So you're carrying that sense of your inner center, your inner foundation. And you don't want anything else to touch it. Now it's good to have a sensitive part of the body, especially when you're using the breath as your foundation. Get a sense of which part of the body is most sensitive to tension in the mind, events in the mind, so that when the breath seizes up at that spot, you know something's happened. You breathe through the spot, and then if you have time, you turn around and look at the mind. If you're in the midst of a conversation or midst of some other activity, just take note. Breathe through it and keep going. But do everything you can to maintain that center. Because it's an act of maintaining it. Whatever little talking you have to do to yourself to remind you to stay there, whatever perception you hold in mind. Make sure you do it skillfully. That's all part of the meditation. It's the directed thought that keeps you in line. It's the mindfulness that keeps you in line. It's only in this way that you can expect to have some progress.